Hello and welcome to Exponential Potential. Hey Jen, how are you doing? I'm good, Claire. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good. And I, I don't know about you, but this month has been an absolute ball in terms of confidence and, and courage. It's been phenomenal. Yeah, I, I've really enjoyed this month. I think it's one of the things that most people struggle with on some level confidence um so I think with the episodes that we've done and the guests that we've had we've had some really powerful conversations around you know divine feminine power with Tanya Penny body image with myself your brilliant biohacks um on confidence which I loved um and I'm just thinking what was the other one we've had well no this is and then leadership as well. And you leadership. leadership yeah. as well, and how you can create you know, a confident workplace. I mean, <laughs> yes, <laughs> out of the park. Um, yes. And we wanted to do something really special, didn't we, with this episode? Uh, y- yes, yeah, something a little bit deeper, more personal, maybe, and actually put some questions out to our audience yeah. um, to get some feedback of what you want to hear. Yeah, and we, so, yeah, we, we, we're quite present on LinkedIn and on Instagram, so you can find us there if ever you want to connect with either Jen or myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but we really have the question to say, look, you know, we, we're going to do a special edition um, on confidence and courage because it's a, it's a conversation that we've loved. Uh, what questions have you guys got? And, um, and this is a ask us anything approach. So so Jen, if you're ready, I'm going to dive on in with the first question. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm ready. So the first one is a natural one, which is, you know, how, how do I feel more confident? Uh, that came through on the Facebook one. Right. Um, and it's a question that I get. It's a question I get a lot with my clients. It's one of the key areas in life, I think. But how do I build confidence? How I boost confidence? Um, and there's, there's, there's two types of confidence, and we'll go into those in a little bit more. But one type is um, when you're actually doing something new that you haven't done before. So if you remember when you learned to drive, most I think most of us drive, <laughs> um, the lack of confidence because we've never done it before. So it takes knowledge, some level of skill. Uh, it takes practice lots and lots and lots of practice Um, and the exam takes a lot of prep work as well so some of it can take research and things like that so there's a lot of practical steps to learning something new Um, the other level and actually you know when you're doing maybe you're doing a speech on stage you're doing a talk on stage you're doing a presentation uh, there's another level of that as well as all the the knowledge and the skills and the practice and the preparation there's also self-confidence and self-confidence will creep into anything we do anyway I don't know whether you've noticed this Claire even when we're learning something there's that confidence of I've never done this before but if we lack self-confidence there's also a deep layer of but I might not be good enough so there's that self-doubt that creeps in as well Um, so that then impacts your abilities or your um, of actually getting the task done I know, you know, some people are really good drivers because they feel confident. Other people don't feel like they're confident, so they feel like they're bad drivers. But that's not because they don't have the skills, the knowledge and the practice. It's because of the self-doubt in their minds. So that's all about self-confidence. So I think some of the practical steps you can take is first is to gain clarity. I've noticed when clients and myself When we have clarity, when we know what we want, when we know what direction we're going in, we have more of a confidence around it. So when we are unfocused, we don't know what we want. So we're very scattered and and that impacts our confidence. So gaining clarity, the preparation, the practice, the knowing your stuff um, is another element. The more prepared you are, the more practiced you are, the more confident you will feel. Um, if you're going into some kind of conflict situation, confidence is really important there. And I especially I know that in the corporate world as well, conflict re- resolution. And um, part of that is knowing your rights and your responsibilities. So know what 
your rights are, know what you, um, maybe you can delve a bit into that, Claire, if you've, we've got time, but knowing what you're responsible for, knowing what your, for example, your job description, and you know that that's your job description, and that's what your um, responsibilities are. And then knowing what your rights are, are as a, as a human or as an employee, that builds confidence. Um, and then other things is taking the focus off of you personally, mm -hmm. taking the focus off that self-doubt of I'm not good enough, I don't, I'm not smart enough, Claire's better at me than me at this, you know, and comparing yourself to somebody else that is that has a different way of doing things. Bring the focus off you and all that self-doubt and focus on the outcomes. What are you going to gain from this? What are your loved ones going to gain from you doing something? What is your business going to gain? What are your employees going to gain? Um, so you're taking the focus off for you and focusing on the impact that you have on yourself, on your loved ones, on your life, in work, in business. Yeah. Anything you want to, I've got a couple of others, but anything you want to add to that, Claire? What resonates really strongly with me in that is um, take the focus off of you. And, mm. and a lot of the time, the focus isn't on you. The focus is on this ideal representation of you. So how you feel you should be in that situation, you know, how perfect you should deliver that, how, you know, it's, it's not, it's not reality. <laughs> it's just this perception of you. And when you, when you let go of that, you can almost breathe and <laughs> just like, it's not about me because people don't genuinely notice. They don't notice their own they don't notice you as much as you think that they do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're still and, kind of quite quite wrapped up in their own in their own space. Um, yes. What I loved about the fact that you brought through conflict is that um, with with conflict again, very often we approach conflict from a an all or nothing. I'm right. You're wrong. Mm -hmm. You're an abuser. I'm not. Yeah. <clears throat> Kind of, you know, it's really strong language, but I think when we give away the ownership, when we kind of take that, I'm really angry at you, or what have you done to me? We mm -hmm. pass way more ownership to the other person than they deserve necessarily. And we abdicate ownership from ourselves. So if we start to look objectively, almost as a third person within that conversation, then we can say, well, you're a bit right. I'm a bit wrong. <laughs> How do we get towards resolution? How do we start mm -hmm. to see that in, in less than absolute terms? And, and again, by automatically taking that independent stance or that factual stance, you're removing that, you're starting to remove the ego. And yes. That always helps the situation to move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And removing yourself, it makes you more neutral mm. by doing that. Um, one of the other things as well is getting curious and both myself and Claire love to get curious. So when I talk about getting curious in this instance, it's again, it's focusing on the outcomes, but getting curious with the possibilities of those outcomes and play with that possibility, the positive, the positives of that possibility. What, you know, what Im impact are you really going to have on others? And then the ripple effect and you can really get yourself carried away into that you can really delve deep and I highly recommend you write it down and read it back because that will help you get the focus off you and put the focus on what really matters and that is the impact that you're having either on your life or on somebody else's life or on your business whatever it might be um, on your loved ones and we have no idea of how that ripples out into the world no. So you can really play with that, um, which is a lot of fun as well. It makes it fun. So it takes away that, oh, my God, that dread and, and starts um, bringing, uplifting you. And again, when you feel uplifted, you also feel more confident. Yeah. yeah. So the other ways of feeling uplifted and confident is celebrate. And I know myself and Claire talk about this a lot in terms of especially as women, we really need to look at what we have actually achieved and what we've accomplished 
and celebrate that. Celebrate that with, um, you know, however you might want to celebrate that. Maybe it's just a pat on the back and go, yes, I did that. Maybe it's having a nice meal out. Maybe it's having a conversation with other women. Um, so really focus on celebrating your accomplishments. And we're so good at downplaying them. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think that leads in nicely to a question. Another question that we've got is how do I find a mastermind of like minded, high achieving women? Oh, I just loved this question when it came through, because, you know, genuinely, when I found communities or relationships that have resonated well, everybody lifts. It's mm -hmm. not a transaction. I give this to you, give to me. It's, it's much deeper than that. You inspire each other. You you drive each other forward, um, as it were. And, you know, I, I've definitely seen, you know, the power of two, three, four, five, six people kind of, you don't want to go too big on this, the power of those individuals together to um, call out the nonsense, whether that's other people's nonsense or if your ego is getting in the way, is like having someone you can trust that says, hang on a second, hang on, <laughs> pull that back. Or do you realize how awesome that is? You're just somebody else noticing that and playing it back can have a huge impact on your on your confidence and how you show up and then it just magnifies over time um so for me kind of finding a tribe is is really really important really important and whether that's one-to-one -one conversations or whether that's through a network um or whether that's a tribe that you develop within your workplace within your within your team in terms of a trusted environment. And, and again, these are many themes that we've been picking up in the podcast, how to do networking, how to, how to present, how to, you know, um, how to lead a team to help everybody be, be more confident. Um, it, we, there's some great content in that, but I love the fact that this person has you know, deliberately asked the question around community. Um, do you remember when we talked to Karen, for example, mm -hmm. um, and Karen gave us all the little sneaky chip tips and tricks around LinkedIn. Yes, and LinkedIn is an amazing resource. Yeah, absolutely. You can, you can find so many people and learn from their stories and, you know, kind of approach people as mentors or partners or, or friends. You know, very too often I see people using LinkedIn as a transactional tool, but it's a great way to learn new skills and make new connections or to you know, ponder over a thought with with a world leading expert that you know we've never had better opportunities to connect with people yeah yeah and I think like you what you said which really resonated with me was keep it small mm -hmm. um there are a lot of networks on LinkedIn for example that are that are high achieving women and they're very big. Some of them are, are very large. Uh, but so it depends on what you're looking for. If you want to be part of a smaller, more intimate group, um, I'm part of an alumni that's um, like minded people. And that has a massive impact. And we, we share skills and we share each other's content and we have chats individually with each other about ideas and things like that. And even I think even having this collaboration with Claire has been incredible. And what we learn from each other and how we lift each other and inspire each other and the ideas that we have. So I, I like the idea of a small group of women yeah. um, cheerleading each other very yeah. much. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, um, and sometimes you're lucky enough that that comes in your natural friendship circles, but very often, particularly if you grow and change over time, you have to you have to find you have to consciously find mm. uh, people. And the other the other aspect, um, which again you know, came through in the networking piece with with John Harvey, um, but is is a piece of advice that I give regularly. If you're in a community, give first. Mm -hmm. don't go to a community on the ask <laughs> all the time mm. be prepared to give 
mm-hmm. and you find that you know the payback comes through quite quickly you're you're recognized as somebody who is prepared to share who is prepared to help move the group forward and you know sometimes um sometimes you know, particularly if there's an imbalance in in power so say you're finding somebody on linkedin who you just thinks amazing or a guest you know when we've been finding <laughs> the podcast were like oh my goodness you're amazing why would you want to talk to me I actually kind of other people are human beings they want to be recognized they want to they want to feel special that they're in that their knowledge that their skills are valued that you know somebody seeks their opinion yes (laughs) Um, yeah yes and and give some really good feedback and and vice versa Uh, I think yeah it seeing what resonates with you isn't it when you're looking at these pe- at people to build to to join a community or a mastermind um it's not some masterminds are attached to programs yeah. so it could be a mastermind so depending on what you're looking for whether that's in your business or whether that's you know if in your le- in as a leadership as a leadership role or whether that's a more personal role um so there are a lot of programs that have masterminds as part of that program so yeah just be open as well. I would say be open. Don't try and squeeze that outcome too tightly. Be open to what's possible um, and s- just see what resonates. And like you say, Claire, reach out and connect with people yeah. and, and have conversation. <laughs> you know, we forget well, we could actually pick, have a conversation with somebody. Well, I haven't seen it so much recently, um, but when COVID first started, you know, when we started to see these large Facebook groups come up, you know, they've maybe be a thousand people. Nowadays, they're 10,000 or 7,000. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's like a thousand people. Then you'd have people say, I'm interested in a six month mastermind of, you know, six like minded women who want to hold each other to account for their progress, who want to share school- skills. And you know who's in you, mm. you see these natural small clusters emerging. So if you can't find one, make one, create one. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. create one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and that's that's brilliant, Claire. That's an easy thing to do to to build that community of women to support each other. You have Facebook, you have LinkedIn, you have Instagram. Um, I created a group uh, for empowering women on Facebook. And that was that wasn't quite the same as building a community, but I I have 960 members in there and it's. But that's slightly different, but it's it's just it's easy to do. It's not difficult, especially when you're only, you know, you're looking for a small group. So, yeah, it's reaching out to people, isn't it? And it's also the power of authenticity and vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Like. I'm curious about this. I want to grow in this way. Who's in it with me? Because mm-hmm. that connects individuals it, it, in such a in such a strong way. And uh, you know, it, we'd said earlier in the episode about um, letting go of this perception of you. <laughs> it just creates too much noise, and kind of tapping into the real you. And that is something that creates these energetic matches it it draws people to you who are of a similar and similar energy similar interests and skills and then you'll start sparking and then you'll start growing together you know it's 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 beautiful to watch yes yeah absolutely is yeah and I think that's those two questions are love are great because we we can't always do this by ourselves and that's a, a wonderful step to be part of a mastermind of women because we we help inspire and grow as you said mm. yes yeah so, so in in terms of confidence uh you know we'd started to tap into some of the the roots of a lack of confidence mm. so a lack of clarity you'd you'd mentioned before are there any other kind of common traits that you see yeah I think um well as whoops as I said before with with confidence so when we lack confidence it comes from a place of Mm self-doubt and self-doubt is created it goes deep and it it goes it goes into our past (laughs) and it's related to 
our childhood and into our adult life. So all our past experiences create our thoughts, our beliefs, our behaviors. So when we have a thought, that will create certain emotions and feelings within us, which will then have an impact on how we behave. And we may be very protective because we don't want to feel a certain way. We may take things very personally. Um, so it comes from a, a very deep level and it's based on our childhood experiences, what we saw, what we heard, what we were told, how we were treated. Um, and all those experiences for at home, at school, at the work, in the workplace, um, our relationships, our partners in life or our boyfriends or girlfriends, all of that. You know, we would, we're told certain things and we believe them at a very early age. And we have touched on this before, but I think it's a really mm. important um, subject to a topic to bring up again. We're told certain things as a child and as an adult, we know that that might not be true, but our patterns are so wired in, we continue behaving that way. Yep. So that's where the I'm not good enough that's where worrying about what other people think. What if I make a mistake? What if I don't get this per? You know, if, what if it's not perfect? Uh, what will people think of me? What if I make a fool of myself? Well, you know, it's a lot of that is related to what people will think of us. Yeah, and that's because we've we've grown up. What you know, having that experience of people judging us, bullying us, putting us down, all of those sorts of things. So that's it's very much connected into our self-worth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I just want to pull through this, uh, this element as well in that you can't underestimate the power of intergenerational links as well. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we grew up as, as children is as much about our uh, mothers and fathers as about our fathers' fathers. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, kind of so, yeah. so some of these patterns are, are really deeply wired within us and when you think about a, a school environment where again so much of who we are is is shaped you're shaped by kind of the whole community and all of these rules about what's right and what's not right and you know, how you should show up and mm -hmm. you know, as, as a child very often to keep safe you you shift towards like the middle don't you because you, know, you can't yes if you're not an outlier but again, do you need that? <laughs> do you need to? <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I think the, the, I was always quite different as a child. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, I grew up with three brothers. So I was, and my sister was a lot older. So she wasn't about when I was growing up. Um, so I was already an outsider in my own home. And then at school, I felt like an outsider because I was literally away with the fairies. <laughs> and I, 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 <laughs> I had a few friends, but my friends were quite. Um, it was a lot of one on one friendship. Yeah. Yeah. And so I always felt like I was outside. Yeah. Um, which affected my adult life. And I always I, I think, you know, I've always with having three brothers they they were they were, I love them to bits but they they would tease me and bully me a lot and that had a massive impact on my self-esteem which had a massive impact my outer confidence was really brave but that actually that's a good point to make about confidence sometimes when we appear to be really confident and we overcompensate because we want to be center of attention that's because we're not confident at all we've got very low self-esteem um, so there's that element of lack of confidence as well. So you look at somebody and you think, oh, my God, they're so arrogant or, oh, my God, they're such attention seekers. But actually, they are just they are lacking in confidence about themselves and they're lacking in self-belief. Yeah. Um, so they want to feel better about themselves. So they become the center of attention. They become the joker in the class. They become the chatterbox. Yeah. 
yeah. all of those things. Yeah. Um, and, and of course, society and culture have a massive impact on our on our confidence as well on being a woman. We've spoken about this before. You know, with generations and generations and generations of women have have been um, mistreated, have been burnt at the stake, if we want to go that far back. And even today, I was talking with Candy Barone, one of our previous guests, um, we're just messaging, and she was talking about the inequality of pay in, in, you know, and it still happens. So for women, all of that, all of that is part of our confidence levels and it impacts our confidence levels. Mm. So the one, the one, so to, to really build confidence and feel confident and be confident is, is deep mm. and it's around believing it's around your self-worth mm. and I just want to share something actually I saw it on LinkedIn don't know whether you saw it Claire um somebody posted um something I think it was Jim Rohn and he's got a $20 bill in his hand and he and it's all nice and crisp and he's and he says, who wants this $20 bill? And everyone puts up their hands and shouts, yeah, I do, I do. Then he crumples it up. Who wants it now? Still the same amount of people, still the same amount of enthusiasm. I do, I do. Then he, he throws it away in the, gar in the bin, in the garbage. Who wants it now? Everybody, I do, I do. Then he takes it out of the garbage, throws it on the floor and stands on it. <laughs> Stomps on this $20 bill. And he says, who wants it now? And the, it's the same amount of people put their hands up or say, I do, I want it. Because no matter what's happened to that $20 bill, it's still worth the same amount of money. It still has value, that doesn't deplete. So for us, if we've been crumpled on, if we've been put down, we still have the same amount of value and self-worth as everybody else. Yeah. And we are born with that self-worth. So some, something that I like to do with my clients is to help them quantum leap into confidence. No, that sounds juicy. <laughs> How do you do that? What do you do? <laughs> what do you do? What do you, yeah, it's that like, kind of yeah. Switch straight to curious. Come on, I want some of that. <laughs> um, it bypasses the need of affirmations because that's something that you can do as well in terms of confidence. I'm I'm confident. I can do this. I've got this. Um, and I and mantras and things like that. And yes, they definitely have their place. However, if you can leapfrog quantum leap which is, so you're just going to leap from where you are now, bypass all that hard work of making your, you know, the mindset um, of talking to yourself, talking yourself into feeling confident. So you, by tapping into your self-worth, by tapping in and activating who you really are, who you truly, truly are, that's when you start to have that self-worth and that's when confidence comes because nothing else matters. It, and what I do is I take a client through an activation. It's an audio, it's a, a voice, like a bit like a meditation. And I say certain words and I remind that person of who they truly are. And in a, you know who we truly are is we are born with self-worth. We are not who we've been told we are by all those bullies or parents or family, or, you know, um, relationships, bosses, teachers. We're none of that. We are unique beings that have abilities, certain personalities, something very, very special that nobody else has to offer and contribute to this world, to humanity, to our loved ones, to our partners to our family nobody else has what you have and when we were born into this world we were born with so much love and I'm not talking this is I'm not necessarily talking love from your parents because that doesn't always happen yeah. I'm talking 
the very fact that you were born, the thousands and thousands and thousands of things that had to be in synchronous in that had to be synchronized for you to exist, for you to be born on this planet, is mind blowing. So the very very fact that you are born makes you worthy. You are you know end of. In fact, being worthy shouldn't even be a thing. A flower doesn't feel like it needs to be worthy to receive the sunshine. So I talk about this is the sort of thing that I do with my clients. It goes deeper than that. And it's very specific to that person and very specific to a situation. Um, but that's, you know, we quantum leap really connecting with you, who you truly are. A being of love and light is how we are all born. It's the only thing we actually have to do. <laughs> yeah. Just make it so much more complicated than that. <laughs> yeah. So that's, you know, working with clients like that. Um, and I, I, I'm in my zone when I do it. Mm. Uh, so it, it, it goes deep. And what actually happens, the activation. So, it's remind, so it reminds who, you who you are and actually is a cellular shift in your body. Mm. So it's a biological, physical shift in your body. Your body that you remember who you are. So that is lasting, that's transformation and it's lasting transformation. Now, will there be times where you feel unconfident or feel shaky? Yes, there, of course there will be, but you, you, you know, you, the more you practice reminding yourself who you are, because yeah. there'll, there'll be as you up level, so you'll feel confident, you'll feel self-worth, but as you up level, in a, your life there'll always be times where you feel a bit shaky yep. so then you go back to your tools and remind yourself who you are yeah but it's a beautiful experience but it's yeah and there, there are so many elements that many of the listeners can take away you know, just straight from the description for sure but mm. but actually that it just I can imagine what a powerful shift that makes for for individuals yeah. Mm. And if anyone wants to try it um, or they want to try coaching, a coaching session with me, I can I can incorporate um, an activation within that coaching, complimentary coaching. And there's a link in the bottom. Yeah, that's so I highly uh, recommend if that resonates with you, if that sort of has you leaning forward. Yeah. And what I the other thing that I absolutely love about this and um you know I've been quite open about my own recovery from from burnout for example was when you go through therapy or when you go through anything like that it still pulls through all this past trauma and you know, you're bouncing around stuff in your head and then the he said and then the she said and then there's you know when you go through processes of forgiveness sometimes that brings all those bits through but actually some of the most potent shifts have come through energetic shifts mm -hmm. that you you accept and transform you know you're guided through it but it it has that deep long lasting shift mm -hmm. not necessarily six months worth of pain <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, yeah we kind of bite we well, bypass that it is, yeah it was like let's just work this through yeah work this through yeah. A different you know actually much deeper level even though it seems more superficial mm -hmm. it's actually more more fundamental yes yeah yeah, yeah. I would you definitely yeah. agree with that and and what you just see it in the clients faces and their body the way the body changes is yeah. it's just such a beautiful incredible thing to see to watch somebody unfold in that way where you know they've gone from tears or not knowing which direction to take not having any confidence to take the actions that they need to take to just just watching them within moments within literally within minutes of sitting up and being alive and alight and inspired and like yes I'm going to do that yes I feel amazing yes I am worthy yes I'm good enough for this. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so powerful. Mm -hmm. So it's, as we start to wrap up today's episode, it's been, it's been great to kind of you know, just open up, you know, what do you want mm. to hear? What questions do you want us to answer? And mm. you know, there's been some really great elements, great ideas, great practical strategies, 
the opportunity to take this this much further but yeah I've, I've really enjoyed today Jen yeah me too <laughs> it's been uh, yeah it's been really wonderful and I just want to mention next week we still are touching on confidence because it is such a big subject for us um and it's with the amazing Tanya Stirl and she is a stylist a uh, personal style brand um and we're talking about how your style impacts your confidence as well so it's how you look affects how you feel and she's got some incredible tips and um of how you can really look good and look good for the part you know you always dress to impress or dress to to the position that you want in life um mm. so um she's i love her she's brilliant she's got some very very good tips and tools and some insights of how you can look and feel great oh that sounds with good. your person yeah. yeah with your personal style <laughs> yeah i love what she does that was superb so so I'm really looking forward to that. I kind of look through some of the past episodes that we've been referencing here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everything that we do is to help you guys and help us to grow. Yes. <laughs> so enjoy it. And yes, like, subscribe, and share what we're doing. If, if you're if you're listening in on in the audio version, maybe tap into the video one every now and again. And, and see how we're doing but yes it's great to have you in our community yes thank you very much for listening and watching and uh, look forward to next time yay cheers ciao <laughs>